okay, so I think that that kind of you know, brings us back, right? So at the end of the day, this is debt, you know. And when we are talking about debt, we, we don't I mean we are kind of concerned about how the company is behaving, how the company is performing, whether it's profitable. But we are concerned about that aspect only as far as they can repay me. Mm. Right? Whether they, after they repay me, they don't make any more money, I don't care. Right? Literally, I don't care. I'm repaid. You know, I'm out of it. Whereas if you're a shareholder, you do care because there's no profit, excess profit to return to shareholders. Mm-hmm. Right? And I think that's where you know, the, the, a very big difference in terms of the, the risk you take on as a um, bondholder or as a shareholder is. Right? Mm-hmm. And I think you know, partially as well in, in terms of preferences, you, know, you, you always have to pay debt first yep. and well, only when debt is paid then you pay equity yep. right um, where even if that's in insolvency you, you pay your debt holder first you know maybe 10 cents on the dollar like um, high flux right mm-hmm. yeah, and, and, and then after that you you know then your shareholders get you know, 1 cent on the dollar because your, your, your bondholders didn't even get that, that 10 cents yeah. <laughs> so you know <laughs> that's I, I think you know, that, that maybe so, so I mean, we can talk about safety from, from many different perspectives, but, mm-hmm. but this is something that's kind of attractive, right? You are literally preferred mm-hmm. you know, to, to, let's say, you, I mean, and, and this is where it gets really interesting because, I mean, government securities, you, you think about it, you know, government bonds, oh yeah, th- that's great, right? If the Singapore government dies, they cannot repay the bond. I have more problems to worry about than my bond investment, honestly. Right? My CPF money also gone. Um, yeah. Everything is gone. I don't even know if I've got HDB. Right? My, that, but you know, if it's a company, and then let's say, I mean, high flux is maybe a bit, let's not talk about high flux yet. <laughs> um, but wait, let me, there's, there's a lot of other companies that issue bonds, right? Like First Read, um, which is also a read. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I think that there are very interesting differences between whether you want to hold a bond mm-hmm. of First Read as a bond holder and as a debt holder, or you want to be an equity holder mm. of First Street, right? Because it's listed, you can hold the equity as well. But before, again, before we get there, oh, so many things we need to talk about. Yeah. But basics, basics, 101, right? So we know what the bond is, a bond is debt. Um, what are the terms that we need to look out for when, when we talk about it? I mean, people talk about yield, I think. You talked a bit about maturity. Um, you know, what, what are these and, and what, what do we really need to look out for? Mm. Uh, I think that's a very good starting point there. Um, so for bonds, right, as an investor, there's a f- couple of things you want to pay attention to. Number one, um, you want to know who issues the bond or who, who is raising money and selling the bonds. So that's what I call the issuer, right? It can be anyone, you know, like from the Singapore government to companies. And recently, you know, the, 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 the more recent corporate bond which was being being, being issued was uh, the Fraser's, Fraser's Property Green Bonds. Oh, yeah. So the issuer was uh, Fraser's Property, which is a, um, a, a well-known local property, property developer in Singapore. So companies like um, Fraser's Property do issue bonds as well. So these are the two big players um, which raise money for bonds. So that's what you want to understand because you want to know who, who is asking money from you, mm. right? You want to know what's their background and whether they have that financial ability to actually pay back these bonds, yeah. right? Because don't forget, while bonds, they legally guarantee you those, the, the money which they return you, but if they fail, you know, if they default, um, you know, if they cannot pay you back, then of course, whatever money we should lend them, you know, gets vanished, right? So that's one that's just one thing which you have to look at, which is important. Another thing which you have to look at is the yield or the coupon of the bonds, right? Because you at the day as investors, you know, we want to know how much money we can make out of these bonds. Because yep. when we lend money, we want to have a certain amount of returns which we can get, right? For putting our money in somewhere else outside of a bank deposit. So the coupon or the yield is important. Um typically as a bond investor, what you can expect is that most companies, um, most companies or what you call corporates, they actually pay you twice a year, okay. right? So a bond which pays you say five um, percent in coupon every year, um, the yield is five percent. What you typically would expect is two point five percent for the first six months, yep. and another two point five percent for the next six months. Okay. Right, so this is what you can expect, you know, in terms of looking at the coupon yep. or the yield of um, the bond itself. Another thing which you want to actually pay attention, which is also very very important here, is the maturity of the bond. Like I've mentioned earlier, the maturity means that um, how long are you going? How long is the company or the government going to uh, uh, raise or borrow the money from you from? Uh, borrow the money from you for? Right. So say for example, um, you have Fraser's property bonds which they they raised property recently raised money mm-hmm. 
and it's called a five-year bond. What this means is that they are that you are going to lend them for five years, right? So at the end of the fifth year, Fraser's property will have to actually pay you back. No matter what happens, they'll have to have to pay you back the money which you lend them. Right? So the maturity is important. So these are the three big um, things, the, the three big criteria you need to tick off on your checkbox when you're looking at bonds. Okay, sorry. So, I mean, again, going back to a debt example, because I, I owe people money, so I know what debt is. Um, you know, the, the coupon is really the interest rate, the interest payment that, that you get back. Um, and and the, so it's, it's a bullet repayment, right? So they will, there's no like, you know, amortization. They repay principal halfway. They, they just keep paying you interest and at the end of the term at maturity, they, they pay you the full amount, mm -hmm. right? Um, then, I mean, I, I was just surfing on Superman the other day. What's, um, what's you to maturity, actually? That's kind of different from you, right? Mm -hmm. So the you to maturity is basically the returns which you get mm -hmm. based on assuming that you reinvest the coupons. Oh, okay. So say for example, right, um, a bond has a yield to maturity of say 5% mm -hmm. every year for five years. What this means is that if you own this bond for five years and you don't sell it off, yeah. you are going to get a 5% yield to maturity. It means that I would assume that in each of this year which you collect the coupons, you are going to reinvest this amount in the same bond for the next five years. That's okay. a 5% yield to maturity. Okay. So the actual interest that you get should be lower than that because yeah. you are reinvesting. So, so okay, sorry. Uh, maybe a different example. Um, let's say the coupon rate is 5%, mm -hmm. right? And then it's, it's annual coupons just because I'm lazy to do math. I buy $1,000 worth. Um, I get $50 at the end of the year. Um, so my yield is um, 5%. Mm -hmm. And then if I take that 50 bucks and I buy again the, the bond at whatever price it is and then you know and then it, it kind of accumulates again because next year I get five dollars and two two and a half cents that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Right. And then so so then at the end of and then let's say it expires at that time, my yield to maturity is actually five point oh two percent because it there's some sort higher. of like, you know, compounding um yep. effect as you reinvest the, the amounts in the same Correct. thing. Correct. Okay, okay. Yep. And, 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 and there's one other important thing also, um, Anthony. Just one quick question here, right? Yeah. Do you, because I know that you are a lawyer. Yeah. Have you done bankruptcies before? I, I try not to let my clients go there. <laughs> <la>. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I mean, we, we, we've done a few restructurings, yes. right? Um, where the, there were bonds or there were loans and then they defaulted because cannot pay. Yep. And then there's this whole, you know, chain effect, yep. right? Um, but yeah, there's, that's, that's yep. painful. I try not to get that. So for 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 bonds, right? One feature for bonds, unlike stocks, is that um, as a bondholder, you are you, you are actually entitled to claim the assets of the company. So let's say if a company, if you know today, if as as a lawyer, you have to do all the bankruptcies of one company, that company would have have to actually sell off its assets in order to pay the bondholders and the lenders first before they pay whatever is remaining to the shareholders. So in other words, if I'm a bond bondholder or, or a bond investor, what's going to happen is that I actually have that rightful claim to the assets of the company. And if the company has rich assets, you know, like yeah. cash, uh, cash in their bank account, if they own properties, they would have to actually sell off all these properties, sell, you know, use the cash to actually pay the bondholder. So in some ways, as a bondholder, what benefit you get is that safety of assets which the company has. And that is sort of aside from, you know, trying to understand uh, who the issuer is, the coupon, and of course, the maturity of um, the bond itself. But I mean, okay, so just to round out that picture, right? So let's say we are talking about unsecured bonds. Because, you know, if, if you are... Because if your bond has security, then you know that that cash is definitely yours, right? For example, um, that that if you have charge over a bank account, then then that's the security you have to secure your bonds, lah. But you know, I think to be very clear, um, even if it's an unsecured bond, um, what what you are really talking about is the liquidation event or an insolvency event, mm. right? Where, you know, they they cannot pay any of their debt over holders, um, you know liabilities more than assets or whatever the test for, for insolvency is now. Eh? 
don't even know. Mm. Um, then, then you 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 essentially sell <laughs> off your assets. Like like you 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 got a home loan. You cannot pay your home loan. The the bank come back and sell your yeah. house, lah. Right. I think that that's essentially what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I think what one thing you kind of need to be careful about is that if the same issuer has given security over other assets, mm-hmm. right? So, for example, if Fraser's bought a building, they, they would naturally have taken a mortgage over that building to, to borrow money to buy it, mm-hmm. right? And then they separately issued bonds and then you bought the bonds. Um, as if they ever go insolvent, that hope not, you know, otherwise we are already in trouble also. Um, the, the building gets taken over by the bank first, mm-hmm. the bank lender first, right? Because their security, that's priority there. And only when, you know, that building has been sold off, that bank debt has been repaid, any excess cash comes back to you, mm-hmm. right? And, and I think, you know, so, so yes, you do have claims to the assets, but in priority to your shareholders, but you are lower in priority to secured creditors, mm-hmm. right? And, and I guess that's also why we have secured bonds, yeah. you know, where, where you kind of have priority um, in respect of certain assets, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that, that's kind of what makes it interesting. And we can talk about all these other type of credit enhancement features as well, right? Because you have um, security, you can have guarantees, you can have all this kind of like fun legal stuff, which I don't want to do day to day, so I don't know why I'm talking about it here. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, the idea is there. La. Idea is there. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, maybe you can just take a step back, right? Mm. And if we talk about bonds in general, I, I think what you have answered about secure and unsecure, I think it's very um, crucial here. But if you take a step back, you know, like what you said, there are also a lot of different kind of bonds out there, right? Like what you have mentioned about secure and unsecured, um, you also have bonds or companies which easily default, right? So these are what you call your high-yielding bonds or um, back in the days when I was working as a credit analyst is what uh, people call a junk bond, right? Yeah, I, I thought high yielding was really very polite. <laughs> yeah. So companies, so companies, they issue bonds, but there are also companies of a very low quality which also wants to issue bonds because no banks will actually lend them money. Okay, okay. So that's where your junk bonds come in. So that's that's, that's junk bonds. I remember like uh, years back when you have like all if, the if Twitter, you know, managed to issue bond instead of getting their LBO, yes, that's junk bond. Yeah. So like um oil and gas like yep. the oil and gas companies where, you know, after the oil price crashed, um a lot of oil and gas companies couldn't service their bonds and mm. they actually defaulted. So those are one group, you know, of bonds um where you know you could actually buy and hopefully, you know, you can get some value out of it. So that's one. Uh, you have your government bonds. You know, you have your corporate bonds. Uh, you also have um, your your state-owned companies. You know, your companies like Singtel, Capital Land. Uh, these are the guys which are frequent uh, issuers or frequent borrowers of bonds. You also have government agencies. So the interesting thing here, you know, bonds is not just limited to corporates. You know, you also have HDB. Yeah. Yeah. HDB bonds. I mean, it's like government, but they pay you more. Yeah. You know, so why not, right? <laughs> JTC, JTC bonds, you have HDB bonds, uh, Sabana Jurong. So a lot of these big um, okay, industries. That one is not like the others. Yeah. <laughs> that one's not like the others, but and, yes, I get that one. And, you know, don't be surprised. You know, I went, when I first saw um, SMU coming out with their own bonds as well, I mean, anything is possible as long as, you know, you are someone who wants to borrow money. Yeah. A bond would be the perfect instrument for, you know, organizations, right? Schools, uh, companies, government organizations to actually raise money for, to, to, to borrow money through using a bond instrument. And yeah. it's wonderful because many of these organizations, you know, they tend to have a lot of money, right? Endowments, charity, mm. and they tend to be well-funded by the government. And these guys, you know, if you don't think that um, schools, like for example, SMU, you know, you would have never thought that uh, SMU would default. There's no such such thing as a school running out of money, right? Well, I, I this mean, will actually make <laughs> you know perfect instruments for bonds. No, I, see, I, I don't really agree there, right? Because I don't I don't know whether how SMU makes money. <laughs> and if they don't make money, how can they repay my bond? <laughs> you know, they they, are, I, they should, okay. oh, I don't know if they are for profit enterprise. Maybe they are, um, but I, I hope they're not. I, I don't know, <laughs> right? I, I think this is one of those things where. I say I don't know more than okay. anything else. But you know, I think that there's so so there's two two kind of very interesting things that I caught, right? So so one is, you know, I, I guess we, we talked about, you know, high yield junk. Um, but then that above that there's also like, you know, investment grade and all that. And and really what that 
how you categorize this is really by credit ratings, right? Um, by your Moody's, S&P, um, or whatever. And I mean, there, there's, again, a lot of doubts around whether the, the ratings are credible and all that. But, mm. you know, it, it's a shorthand, lah, right? Yep. Have information better than don't have. Okay, so, so that's one. And then with the credit rating, that kind of gives you a very high-level view of the risk of the company. And therefore, a, also a very high-level view, uh, a very high-level view of the yield you should get out of the company, mm. right? Because if, you know, theoretically, if it's really, really safe, like Singapore government um, versus very risky, like, I don't, I can't think of a risky Singapore company. Everybody very safe. Um, very risky, like Credit Suisse, <laughs> right? Um, nowadays. <laughs> then, then you, no, the, the use, like, you can't expect Singapore government pay you 4%, Credit Suisse pay you 4%, right? Who would buy Credit Suisse in that sense? Who would buy Singapore government? You know, so that, like, you, the, the more you, you get, the, the more risk, in a sense, or risk of non-payment, in a sense, that, that you are supposed to, you know, that you are taking on. So I think that that's something to, to be a bit wary about.